On Friday, we went in depth with former National Security Advisor John Bolton on whether there is a viable off-ramp for the Russian president in Ukraine, as well as President Biden's Armageddon comments. What's your reaction to President Biden's comments that we have not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis? Well, I think uh, any time we contemplate the potential use of nuclear weapons, we've got to take it seriously. But I also think we've got to be very clear-eyed about it. And I think uh, the president's comment overstated the gravity of the situation we're in right now. It is not inevitable. But Putin would like us to think it's inevitable. He'd like to see people nervous. He's trying to deter us. He has done this several times already after his invasion of Ukraine. He's been bluffing each time. There is a risk here of the use of nuclear weapons. I don't think we're in the circumstances where it's going to happen, although we watch it carefully. But it's very important for the West not to be deterred by Putin's use of this nuclear threat. Do the president's comments complicate intelligence gathering efforts? Well, I think that uh, they, they probably do not, but I think it worries our uh, friends. You know, the, the Poles are already worried enough by the Russian threat. They've offered to base American nuclear weapons on their territory. I think the same goes for other Eastern and Central European countries. It's a very difficult situation and, uh, and all the more reason for a president to be prudent. How would the U.S. respond to Russia's use of a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine? Well, I think we've got to have a, a very, very substantial response. Uh, a number of things have been suggested, strikes against Russian forces in various places. I, I don't have any problem with that. They're the ones who invaded uh, Ukraine. But I think it's more important to levy responsibility uh, on the authorities in Russia who would have approved of the use of a nuclear weapon. And I mean very specifically Vladimir Putin. I think we should make it clear publicly so that not just Putin, but all the top Russian leadership, all the citizens of Russia know that if Putin authorizes the use of a nuclear weapon, uh, he's signing his own suicide note. So what would that look like in practical terms? Well, you know, he's the, uh, the center of command and control of the Russian military. National command authority is what we call it. He's a legitimate military target. And I think, uh, while plenty of other things we can do as well, that he needs to know that he's on our target list at that point. Why did you write this week that Putin must go? Now is the time for regime change in Russia. You know, I think this has been the 800-pound gorilla in the room uh, ever since uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, increasingly, it's clear from everything we know about the way the war was conducted in Ukraine, the atrocities committed, uh, what Putin is doing inside Russia, the threats he's making uh, on the nuclear side. This whole combination of behavior uh, makes it very hard to see how there can ever be normal relations between Europe, the United States, and a Russia under Putin. Russian people are talking about this themselves. Uh, Alexei Navalny has written about what a post-Putin government in Russia would look like. Uh, we need to decide for ourselves. We need to have the debate uh, if that isn't now our ultimate objective, not because we saw it at the beginning for something like this, but because Putin has left us no real alternative. Do you see weakness right now in Putin's government that we haven't seen before? So it's a, a window of opportunity. Well, I think you have to see it along a spectrum, uh, from a very powerful position on the day before the Ukrainian invasion to sliding down a scale where I don't think his regime is threatened tomorrow or perhaps even in a, for a considerable period of time, but where it's unquestionably going downhill, where his circumstances politically at home are becoming more and more serious, uh, and where the alternative for Russians themselves uh, grow increasingly limited if they don't involve removing not just Vladimir Putin, but the entire top echelon of his government. Is there a shared view internationally of what victory would look like in Ukraine? Uh, there is not a shared view, and I think that's a problem. I think it stems from the fact that in February and March, most people thought it was a question of how long it would take for Russia to win, and what could we do to uh, forestall that? What could we do to prepare for guerrilla warfare after the Russians prevailed? Now, for a variety of reasons, the efficacy of the Russian, uh, the efficacy of the Ukrainian forces, the appallingly bad performance of the Russians, the aid the outside countries supplied, uh, victory of some kind is clearly within view for Ukraine. I think 
Uh, it's easy to say what the desired result is. We want all Russian forces off the territory of Ukraine as it was from independence uh, in 1992. Uh, getting there is a lot harder, and I think uh, that's, that's why right now there's no sign of a diplomatic way out. Mm -hmm. With mounting losses, is there still an exit ramp for Vladimir Putin, which allows him to save face? I don't think at the moment uh, Putin can even admit that things are going wrong. There was a point a month, six weeks ago, where he could have said, I've achieved my objectives and, and asked for a ceasefire. He's not going to ask for a ceasefire or a diplomatic uh, exit when he's in retreat. And at this point, just when you think the Russian military can't perform any worse, it does again. So he, he's, he's got a deep problem as to uh, how, even if he wanted to stop the war, he would be able to without further endangering his own domestic political position. Earlier, you said that Vladimir Putin should understand that he's a legitimate military target. Critics would say that you're warmongering. Uh, it was the Russians who invaded Ukraine. It's the Russians who have ground the civilian population and infrastructure into the dust. Uh, if you want to stop the war, it's very simple. Russian troops withdraw.